Are you a STEM student and want a little extra money to help fund that degree? Well, you're in luck because today we are diving into seven scholarships specifically designed for students in science or environmental science. I was able to get one of these myself, so they are very attainable and they are worth it. Spoiler alert, the money is not the only benefit that many of these scholarships have to offer. I've linked to all of these scholarship websites below if you want to explore them and maybe get started on that application while you finish watching this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting it off strong with a scholarship from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and that is the Ernest F. Hollings Undergraduate Scholarship. This was established 20 years ago in 2005 when Ernest F. Hollings, who was a senator from South Carolina, decided to retire from Congress. He stood up for ocean and conservation policy, so he started this fund to increase environmental literacy and generally further NOAA's mission. He was a pretty cool guy. While he was in office, he helped enact the Coastal Zone Management Act, the Marine Mammals Protection Act, the Oceans Dumping Act, and the Sustainable Fisheries Act, which all have something to do with conservation and the ocean. Since it was founded in 2005, 100 students have received the award every year, which means there are over 2,000 alumni, and 75% of those alumni ended up going to graduate school after receiving the scholarship. So not only is it preparing you for a very successful career, helping you fund your current undergraduate degree, but it is also connecting you to this really wide network of other sustainability professionals. Now, what are the actual numerical benefits of the scholarship? Well, it's up to 9,500 US dollars towards your undergraduate tuition, and that is for two full years of full-time study at an accredited university. It also includes a 10-week full-time paid internship at $700 per week at a NOAA facility during the summer. So not only is it giving you that money, but also an internship, which I know many of you are on the hunt for this year. It does include two mandatory events that all awardees do have to go to, and that's just the orientation and then an annual symposium. However, it does include travel funding for both of those in your award. So you don't have to worry about paying for those either. And then the last thing that they provide is during that 10-week internship at the NOAA facility. If you don't have housing for that, they will give you a stipend for housing. Now, all of this is incredible. So as you would imagine, it is pretty competitive to get the actual award. To be eligible for this award, you either have to be a full-time second-year student at a four-year program or a full-time third-year student in a five-year program. So essentially, you need two full years of undergraduate study left in your program. Your GPA has to be at least a 3.0, and you have to major in one of the relevant majors that they define. These include things like environmental and oceanic sciences, engineering, physical sciences, remote sensing technology. The list really goes on if it has something to do with NOAA's mission then you can apply. As a reminder, all of the links for these scholarships are below, so you can check them out as we go along. But we'll move right on to our next scholarship, which is the Udall Scholarship. This one honors Morris K. Udall and Stuart L. Udall. I actually have a book that was written by Stuart L. Udall, and it is like one of the very first books of the environmental movement. Very interesting, a little outdated at this point, but if you're interested, I think it's called A Quiet crisis. It was like when they were first realizing that there is a climate crisis, but this scholarship is in honor of him and Morris Udall. Both of them were advocates for conservation and the environmental movement in general, as well as advocates for Native American self-governments, healthcare, and restoring public lands. In 2025, the scholarship program awarded 55 students the scholarship, and the scholarship grants you $7,000 in a one-time payment, as well as access to their broad alumni network where you can connect with other alumni from the program to network, do informational interviews, and participate in your regional alumni networks where you can receive job offers from different lift serves and things like that. They also have a two-day scholar orientation once you receive the award where you can attend trainings, meet the other alumni and awardees in your year, and generally network 
with other environmental and Native American professionals. To be eligible for this scholarship, you do have to be a sophomore or junior in college. You have to show that you're interested in environmental policy, conservation, and environmental stewardship by participating in campus activities that promote these kinds of ideas. And you do need a faculty advisor to help you apply. So you can't just go onto the website and click apply. You need to work with a faculty advisor at your university and have them sponsor you to submit the application. However, the faculty advisor will help you through the entire process and end up doing a lot of the admin work. So I think of it as kind of a benefit to the program. All right, our third scholarship is the Brower Youth Award, which was established by the Earth Institute, which is a nonprofit organization started in 2000. With this one, you get a $3,000 one-time cash prize, as well as a short film that kind of shows off what your project was. We'll get into that in a second. And it includes fully funding a trip for leadership development activities, including meals, lodging, and travel. Now, this one isn't just for undergraduates. To be eligible, your age has to be somewhere between 13 and 22. So if you are in high school, you are actually eligible to apply to this one. The catch is that you had to play a major role or lead an environmental campaign, project, or activity. They're really focusing in here on leaders of group efforts rather than the individual projects because they really want to help fund potential leaders in the environmental movement in the future. This next one is with the Society of Women Engineers Scholarship. This one has been around for 65 years and has helped over 5,000 women in engineering and technology achieve their academic and professional goals including me. I got one of their scholarships my senior year of high school as I was entering into an undergraduate degree in environmental engineering. Now you might be asking, hey Maddie, I thought your degree was in environmental science, and it was. I started as an environmental engineer and then I switched. I actually have a full video explaining that situation and my decision to change, so I'll link that up in the cards if you're interested. But alas, I still was able to receive the scholarship because I was eligible at the time when I got it. There are many different scholarships with the Society of Women Engineers. You just apply once and then you're considered for all of them and selected based on the ones you are eligible for. These scholarships can range from $1,000 to $20,000 and it's just a one-time payment. So they have a scholarship for emerging freshmen in college, that's the one I got, and they also have ones for sophomores, juniors, and seniors in their undergraduate degree. You also obviously have to identify as a woman and you have to be majoring or you have to be planning on majoring in engineering or computer science full-time. And then you have to have a GPA over a 3.5 on a 4.0 scale. All right, our fifth one on this list is the National Garden Club Scholarship. This one is hosted by National Garden Clubs, which is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to promoting environmental stewardship and horticulture. They have different levels of scholarships, high school, undergraduate, and graduate, but for their undergraduate scholarships, they grant up to 45 scholarships every year. And the organization has a number of other awards and grants for larger group projects if you're looking to fund something like that as well. If you win the scholarship, you get $4,000 in award money in a one-time payment, but you have to be a college sophomore, junior, or senior for their undergraduate scholarship. You also have to be at an accredited college or university and have a GPA above a 3.25. Finally, you have to have a major that's related to landscape design, horticulture, gardening, floral design, or environmental issues in general. And I find that those majors tend to be the smallest, so I'm glad they're doing a scholarship just for those folks. This next one I also have a personal connection to, and it is the American Geophysical Union, or AGU as I'll refer to it from now on, their David E. Lumley Young Scientist Scholarship. Now, AGU is all about earth and space sciences, and this particular scholarship is intended to help fund undergraduates who are interested in pursuing a career in environmental or energy-related issues. But AGU does have a number of other awards and scholarships 
scholarships. So if you don't qualify for this one, it's worth checking out their list of other scholarships to see if you qualify for one of those. They also have a number of grants for graduate and PhD students if you are in that boat as well. But for this one, if you win, you get a $1,000 cash prize as well as $500 help fund participation in their AGU annual meeting. Now, you might be wondering why $500 just to go to one meeting? Well, that's because in order to be eligible for the scholarship, you have to be the first author on a paper or presentation that is presented at the AGU annual meeting. Fun fact, I did a paper that was presented at the AGU annual meeting, but I was not the first author, so I did not qualify for this scholarship. Other than that, there are a few other eligibility criteria that you do have to meet. You have to be enrolled in high school or undergraduate studies. You have to submit a personal statement, a recommendation, and submit your abstract for your paper before you apply to this scholarship. And you have to show an interest in energy or environmental sciences. Honestly, I feel like the flex that you were the first author on a paper that was presented at the AGU annual meeting is more valuable than a $1,000 cash prize, but that's besides the point. Let's move on to our last scholarship, which is with the Society of Exploration Geophysicists. With this one, you just apply once and then you are automatically considered for all of the scholarships that you are eligible for. In 2024, 66 students received the scholarship out of 375 applicants, and the scholarships range all the way from $500 to $10,000, but the average is somewhere around $3,600 for one scholarship. But you do have the option to renew that scholarship year over year. You just have to volunteer or participate in SEG events at your college or university's chapter. Now, to be eligible, you either have to be a high school student planning to pursue a degree next year, an undergraduate student, or a graduate student. They'll determine which scholarships you're eligible for once you apply. The website says you have to have above average grades, but they don't specify what that means, so take that with a grain of salt. And you have to be pursuing or planning on pursuing a career in geophysics. And that's the last one. I did have two other scholarships for you, but unfortunately the websites that those scholarships were listed on have since been shut down. One of them was the EPA and one of them was with the Department of Energy, so I assume they're no longer offering those scholarships anymore, but hopefully these seven scholarships will help you out a little bit, help you with your search for funding for your environmental or STEM degree. If you are looking to further fund your degree through an internship, I did make a whole video on how to search for and actually get an internship in college, so I'll link that over here if you are interested, but thank you so much for sticking to the end, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!